Hey, Nicole, check this out. Nicole, check this out. Yeah? Woo! Ah, this one go off now. Cool stuff, right? Thank you so much for tuning in. And I would like to make a big shout out to Nicole that sent me this book, um, Top 15 Secrets to Success in Life and in Business. Thank you so much, Nicole, for this. It's a late uh, birthday present, but I really, really appreciate it. And Robert is in the house. It was really, really good um, catching up with you in the morning. Thank you so much for making time, even though my little girl was just all over the place. Thank you so much. Kevin Justice PT. Thank you, man. Tell us where you are right now. Just tune in with us and um, let us know what you're up to. Are you lifting heavy things or are you just um, hanging out there? Guys, thank you so much, everybody. Every one of you guys that's tuning in right now, wherever you're from, can you just type in uh, the name of the city you are tuning in from? Robert Kirby. Thank you so much. Where are you, brother? Okay. Now it's 2 p.m. and everybody else knows uh, my name is Prosper Tarovinga. And, uh, yeah, I actually believe that every online business out there whose owner is grinding should actually be profitable and enjoyable. And I actually believe that if that person is doing their work and putting in their time, they should actually be creating for and relating to those people um, you know, they're going to be demanding money from Rob. Robert is from Sydney. Nice to meet you, man. Thank you so much for tuning in. All right. So every single day, um, we sit around here at 2 p.m. and we discuss things that are designed to help um, us have that business that's profitable and enjoyable. And I see John Herbert is from Stowe. Ohio, is it? Thank you so much for tuning in. I believe this is the first time I've seen you live. Thank you so much, John, for your patronage. Okay, so I really want to talk about stuff that not a lot of people talk about anywhere else. Um, I'm a, you know, I help people uh, get leads and get revenue basically by working with PR and digital marketing and personal branding. Okay, so some people will be out there talking about Facebook ads. Some people will be out there talking about, uh, you know, tricks that would help you with your websites or with your blog, whatever it is. I just want to inspire you to do things that inspire you, all right? I want you to go out there and create something that's going to feed your family. I want you to go out there and create something that you can will to the next generations. I want you to go out there and create something that you are absolutely going to love working in, all right? So that's the reason why my show is part motivational, part uh, strategy, and part human. And the human aspect is no matter what you're going to do, no matter what trickery, no matter what strategy, it all boils down to you as the person. Are you prepared to go out there and battle with what's going to come to you? Are you out there to battle with, um, you know, a, a, a flimsy market? Are you out there to battle with an audience? Because you're also going to be dealing with humans. So I try to engineer or spark the human in you to connect with the other humans so that you too can actually have a profit in your business and enjoy what you're doing. All right. You know what? We all do this for money. We all do this. Maybe we've got a goal to be a millionaire. We've got a goal to um, maybe get the six figures, whatever it is that you do it for. But if I remember correctly, there's this guy called Jim Ron. He said that the greatest reward of being a millionaire is not the amount of money that you earn, but it's the kind of person that you become. All right? The kind of person that you become, the kind of person that has choices, the kind of person that has no fear, the kind of person that is energized, the kind of person that is really, really up and ready to tackle whatever it is that they're meant to be doing. You know why? Because you love what you're doing. Right, Fed and Joe says, Livuenja and put his Vugira Lapa Scona. And Joe, and Joe Selly was with every day, say, I was Scona Lapa Skulumange, Nendava say, the business, Nabongutili, I will call Nalani Livuela Lap. Thank you so much, Robert, for tuning in. Hi, Tom, thanks for tuning in. Stephen Seedon, thank you also so much for tuning in. All right, if you're just tuning in, um, I was just, uh, you know, elaborating what we're going to be talking about today. 
It's not going to be the strategy that you're going to learn. It's not going to be the course. It's not going to be um, the coach. It's just going to be maybe your personal shortcomings. What are you doing yourself personally to actually make sure that your business becomes a success and to make sure that you actually enjoy the relationships that you create in your business? All right, because we could sit around here and we can talk about, um, you know, the SEO, we can talk about the funnel, um, you know, organization, we can talk about Google AdWords, we can talk about Facebook advertising, but all of those are instruments that need to be picked out of a toolbox by somebody who is well equipped and knows what tool works where. Because some people, you know, wish that their circumstances could just magically change for them. You know, uh, some people just think that by following through um, on an ad or following through instructions that they're told by somebody who is also failing in life that, you know, they, they would dramatically change their situation. You know, they sometimes don't actually have the desire to become a better person themselves. So they don't proactively go out there and change their circumstances. They don't proactively go out there and learn more things. They don't proactively go out there and actually introduce themselves to the people who can give them money. Because yes, we're right. We're being told, yes, content is king, automation, all of that, all of those buzzwords. Those are things that can be utilized by people that already have systems in place. People that already have built relationships. People that already have brands. What about you and me who's just starting out? What about you and me who doesn't have, you know, deeper pockets to go in and, and splurge $500 a day on Facebook or more? What happens to us? We have to manually do it up until we can m use the, you know, money to leverage, um, you know, our resources. So this is where I come in. This is where I sit down with you every single day because I'm vi viscerally invested in your success. I want you to win. I want you to have a business that's actually profitable and enjoyable. But unlike most people, they just simply wait and wish for luck. Do you know what I mean? You know, they, 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 you, know you can seek out to be the one person who's actually equipped with the skills and the ability to do brilliant things. But some of us don't want to do it. Good day, Troy. Thanks so much for tuning in, buddy. All right. I want you to start understanding that you're not going to need a guarantee from a guru who's also trying to keep the lights in his house, um, you know, lit. You're not going to need um, a, a guarantee from somebody who is claiming to make that kind of money when the rest of, um, of the earnings go to tax, when the rest of the earnings go to JVs, when the rest of the earnings go back into the business. All right. You can actually now start becoming the kind of person who does highly influential work. Do you know what I mean? Your work can actually be to solve people's pressing problems. Can you imagine if you actually have a service or a product that people actually cannot live without? Only because of the way you treat them, only because of the way you are around them and the way you create the relationships with them. Good day, Craig. How's it going, man? Thanks for tuning in, watching me live. All right. So you as an entrepreneur, your job is to actually solve pressing problems, improve people's lives and get noticed. All right. If you're not doing anything personally for you to get noticed, especially by, um, you know, important people, because they want to share your stuff, not because of you, you know, not because of your sake. No, they want to do it because they are actually proud of what you're doing because your work makes them look good to their audiences. How great would that be when you just viscerally sit down and figure out why am I doing this? Why is it important? Who am I serving? What would happen if I stopped doing this? Because up until you have that, you, this whole internet thing would just be a walk. I mean, it will, it will just be play for you. But if you're going to be invested in becoming the kind of person who's out to serve, who's out to learn, who's out to live, and is also out to contribute to other people, that's when you get fulfilled. That's when you start having a business that's actually profitable and enjoyable. Unless you're happy, you know, making a win of maybe $800 a month or maybe $200, um, you know, a week or whatever, whatever crap money that you, is coming in right now. 
If you're up for the real money, if you're up for the real challenge, you gotta start talking to people. You gotta start becoming a person of substance. You gotta start becoming a person of value. You gotta start becoming a quality person. And guess what? The quality of who you can be and the work that you can produce can, is completely within your control. You can control how much work you do. You can control how many people you talk to. Do you know what I mean? You can't just sit there and wish for it to happen or expect some automation to connect with your customers. These are human beings too behind the screen. Right? So you must become the kind of person that naturally attracts this success that you're looking for. Can you type in the comments there, what does success actually mean to you? If you know what it is, can you just quickly type it in there so that I can understand the kind of people that I'm working with here. And I'll be showing you exactly how you can, you know, easily, not easily, but how you can strategically start looking at, at, at how to move forward and start being a person of substance, a person that people really want to be around. Do you know what I mean? There's people like Bill Gates. There's people like Elon Musk. You know, you know, of course, becoming a successful entrepreneur, you know, it does require a certain amount of some sort of intelligence. But half of it is human, um, you know, emotional intelligence that's needed. A few people like, yeah, you know, Elon Musk and Bill Gates. Yes, they're using their smarts to get ahead and, and stuff like that. But it, it, which is not bad as well. You know, there's a lot of unsuccessful geniuses out there because they haven't invested in the people that are going to be paying them the money. Do you know what I mean? There's a lot of success, uh, unsuccessful geniuses out there. And there's a lot of high quality, successful business owners with average levels of intelligence. You know what they're intelligent around? Knowing how to deal with people, knowing how to care. Right? And Tom Boyd, success is what you put in and what you get. And Veronica says, flow. Um, Aston Martin speed for grocery shopping. All right. The reason why a lot of people are failing, no matter how smart you might have been, no matter how good your grades were at school, if you have an absence of motivation, if you are not motivated and your why is not in check, first of all, you won't be energized to wake up in the morning to do whatever it is that you're supposed to be doing for people. You know, David just so man just says being successful means. Um, the achievement of desired visions and planned goals. Furthermore, success can be certain social status that describes a personal um, prosperous standing or whatever it is. Okay, Nicole says achieving beyond your expectations. Uh, exactly. I mean, if, if, if that's what your definition of success is, that is it. But you've got to go out there and work for it. You know what? Being smart and talented is good enough. Knowing the right strategies and knowing the right people within your area is good enough. But if the person doesn't have the motivation required to use their talent, it becomes irrelevant. All the connections, all the groups that you might be in, all of that does not matter if you're not motivated to wake up in the morning and, 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 and if you're lying in bed all day and you know you could be thinking up solutions on, on quantum physics, I don't know what, what it is that you're doing, you will be going nowhere real quick. And David Susomanja from Abuja, thank you so much for tuning in. So if there's no motivation, no matter what you have, no matter what skills you have, no matter what, you know, connections you might have, no matter what groups you're invested in, no matter what courses you bought that are even, you know, gathering digital dust, if you're not motivated to actually take action and do anything about it, you're not going anywhere. Another thing that, that is stopping a lot of people from, from being successful or going ahead in business is they don't know how to control impulses. There's a lot of impulse buying that happens. You know why? The fear of loss, FOMO, or whatever it is. When you lose control of impulses, you can hinder overall performance. You can be invited to come to some webinar that you know all the questions that you're going to be asking, but you just sit there just because you don't want to miss out. And if you lack control of your impulses, you know, you tend to go for whatever solution comes your way. 
And guess what? It's not usually the best one. You know? Especially this happens to people that are so overconfident about who they know or what they know, just going in blindly. And it's usually the people that claim to be intelligent. You know, you gotta control yourself. If you can't control your impulses and you're very impulsive and you make decisions on the, on the raw, you're not a long-term winner. You know why? Because you always have fires to quench. But if you sit down, you strategize, you focus on who you want to be, who do you want to serve and how are you going to serve them and make that your priority in the rest of your life. I don't care even if I start losing an audience as long as the people understand that I'm here to make their business profitable and enjoyable and then they can see in the work that I do and the people that I talk to, those are the only two words that mean anything to me. Anything that goes far beyond that, I don't want to hear about it. You might say, oh, oh my God, he's so closed-minded, he's not open-minded, but you know what? Everybody else can do that. But how many of us are actually going to be good at what they're doing? You know? And the reason why people hop on and hop off to whatever opportunity or whatever strategies that come in is because they don't have the perseverance or the stick to itiveness of it. That also is a personal trait that if you don't have that, you're not going anywhere. You're heading nowhere real quick. It's a very huge mistake and I see this over and over again. A lot of entrepreneurs or people that are studying up, they give up way too soon. How long does it take to become a doctor? Can you type in the comments there, how long does it take to become a doctor? How long does it take to become a lawyer? Can you also type in, look Corinne, thank you so much for tuning in. How's it going my friend? How long does it take to become uh, a pilot? Can you type in the comments there? Right, Robert says nine years for being a doctor. All right, what makes you think that being an online entrepreneur is something that you can do overnight? Do you, do you get what I'm? Do you see where I'm going with this? So, if you lack perseverance, if you don't have the stick to itiveness of maybe creating a business plan that outlasts you, and you can actually share and create a legacy, maybe this whole thing it will work, but not for a long time. A whole lot of people don't push through obstacles and there's going to be changes, especially in the online space. Everything changes every single year. So don't expect what worked yesterday to actually work today. So you got to continuously learn. You got to continuously, um, you know, uh, live through, you know, and study. And then you got to contribute to other people so that you can understand that you understand what you've learned. The more you consume, the more you also have to regurgitate. Don't just consume and not take ad action. And also, earlier on, I was asking, um, you know, about how long it takes to become a lawyer, how long it takes to become a pilot, and how long does it take, um, you know, to become, you know, a, a doctor or something like that. It's, it's, it, I mean, being an entrepreneur is, is like the easiest thing that people think that if, if they've failed with their own career or if they cannot even manage having a job, they think it's easy to just become a, a, an entrepreneur. Well, yeah, obviously it's a free for all. Everyone can try, but the hustle is sold separately. Do you know what I mean? So don't come in and ruin it for us just because you are lazy and you couldn't even stick to your job and you think that entrepreneur is just a walk in the park. Sometimes just having the wrong skills and doing the wrong thing, you know, becomes, it becomes meaningless. And that's the reason why a few people are failing. So all of these shortcomings will actually ruin your business without you realizing. Oftentimes you would find that some people have strong skills in, and maybe communication, but you, 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 you don't see them utilizing those skills. They want to be going out there just because some people are talking about funnels. And then they just want to, you know, get sucked into that rabbit hole. You may have really good, um, you know, video presentation skills, but we don't see your videos. How are people going to hear your message? You know? Sometimes there's a few tasks that you can do. Why not outsource those tasks to people that are well suited for that particular job? Just be, 
because somebody is able to win at uh, what do you call it trivial trivial pursuit you know it doesn't mean they they they're equipped to manage a business do you know what I mean just because yes you started a lemon stand it doesn't mean you are equipped to to start a, a, a business And Nicole says, saw your video on the fan page, you are a role model, as you mentioned, on the nine-time show. Exactly. Well, that is my why. Because there's a lot of people out there that are just jumping into, into this whole space. They don't have anyone that's, um, you know, directing them. They don't have anyone that's actually telling them or being the devil's advocate. It's not easy. It's not easy being an entrepreneur. I speak... To maybe 10, 15 people every single day. Maybe you've seen my show or, or the people that I deal with, my clients, etc., etc. It's not easy, guys. You've got to really want it. You've got to have the right skill. And you got to start putting your thoughts into action. Luke says, people make a living out of freelancing. Support those that will make your business a success. Exactly. Like Luke Corin is a, is a graphic designer. I'm not going to sit down here and, 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 you know, try and work out Photoshop when I've got people that I can make, make a phone call and say, hey, listen, man, can you help me out with this? Can you imagine how much time is being wasted, you know, in business by people taking on jobs that they're not supposed to be doing? One thing you should understand about being an entrepreneur is back in the corporate system, there was few departments. There was the accounts department, there was the finance department, marketing department, there was whatever department for a company to run. Now, if you're going to be running your own business by yourself as a, as a freelancer or whatever, you constitute as part of a department to make a grand big company. All right. Once you understand that psychology that you, you are just a part of a department to make somebody else's business bigger. Now figure out how many of those companies can you fit into so that your company becomes their accountant. Um, you, you, you become their accountant for that company. You become the marketing department for that company. Don't go out there saying you have a business when your business is just part of something grand. All right. So once you start thinking in that sort of space, you actually get more. You actually stop having a scarcity mindset. You know why? Because there's a lot of people that are looking for your services, but they're not looking for your cockiness. All right. Sometimes, you know, we, we, we have all of these thoughts. We have all of these dreams about trying to run a business. But if you don't have the skills, if you don't have the, the motivation, if you don't have, um, you know, the, the, the tenacity, the will or the, or the wherewithal or the stick to itiveness, find some other people that you can collaborate with so that if they, if you are not a good salesperson, find somebody who will constitute to become the sales department of your company. Unless you just have nothing to offer then I'm sorry I can't help you there. You know, so, some people, some, some really smart people that I know, they get lost in their thoughts. Are way up there thinking, you know, they're it. Their ideas could be really good ones. You know? But then they fail to translate them into action. There's always the number one people. Find people that can support your movement. Find people that can support your, um, you know, your, your, your vision. Find people that will help you move whatever uh, vision you have. Because without action, smart ideas are just daydreams. We all have these ideas to run our companies, etc., etc. But without the people that are actually working under us or people that we can bring in to, to, to help us bring those ideas into fruition, we're just wasting our time. In the process, you know what then happens? Because you can't do certain tasks, you lose direction and you lose focus. You know? What does focus stand for? F. O C U S. Follow one course until successful. Because if you find yourself being this, that, this, them, that, that one, that one, what are you known for? You need people to actually know you for something. I want you to type in the comments there what are you known for? What do people come to you for? What are you known for? Can you type in the comments there? Yeah, 
And Paul, how are you saying? <laughs> thoughts without action are just thoughts. Exactly, my man. And how are you doing today? You know, there's also one other big mistake that a lot of entrepreneurs are making. You know, they become more concerned about short-term gains. You know, we now live in, in, in a world where Netflix, uh, Stan or Cable have become part of our culture. And guess what happens? Guess what actually happens in on Netflix? A whole life can be seen, heard, and, 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 and experienced in a 30-minute min- episode plus commercials. Somebody's born, then they go to kindergarten, and then they, they graduate, and then they have their 18th, their 21st, and then they get married, and then from then on, they, um, you know, what happens? They, they, they get 2.5 kids, and then those kids get married, and then they die, and then their kids have grandkids, all in a space of 30 minutes in an episode plus commercials, except on Netflix. All right? So if you think that you just put in a coin here and then a business pops out from there, I think you're lost. All of these things that I'm talking about are to make sure that you are well geared for what 2018 has to offer. There's going to be a lot of automation. There's going to be a lot of messenger bots. There's going to be a lot of all of this stuff. But for you to actually succeed, you need to have direction of where you want your business to go. You need to have focus and you need to have an audience. All right. And if you're just going to be looking at it for just the short term gains and end results, I think you've already lost the battle. The project you're working on right now, it might be brilliant. Whatever you're doing right now, it might be brilliant. But if you can't contribute to the overall good or goal of your, um, you know, ultimate plan or whatever your business model is. It's not a smart thing to spend time on. You need to focus, follow one course until successful. And then from then on, you can then decide, can you do something else that's totally different? Now, Luke says 2018, I'm preparing to go bang, but need to catch up for a coffee prior. Oh, that's all right, man. All right. So you really need to make sure that you've got all of these things in place. And also, 2018 is going to be taking the next step, like what Luke is talking about. You know, right now, find out what has been working, what didn't work, ditch that. Don't bring in a dead horse into 2018. You know, some people find it difficult to bring, you know, a project to a close. That's, you know, it's, it's normal. Some of us have whatever ADHD or whatever, but it's generally an indication of fear. That you are afraid to take the next step. You know? Some people are actually just afraid to move on before it's time. 2018 has to be a time for a lot of people to blow up. Like what Luke is saying. He wants to go bang. But some people who are, you know, perfectionists, they struggle with this issue. You know what I mean? They struggle. They, they find it hard for them to move forward, to, to progress, you know what, to the next stage or next phase of their business up until everything is perfect. There's never going to be a perfect time. Unfortunately, unfortunately, perfection almost never comes. So you have to start looking now, all right? 2017, what did I achieve? Who did I serve? How did I serve them? What did they like most about what I was serving them? And how do I want to improve on that service so that you go bigger, better, faster in 2018? Paul says, get uncomfortable, people. That's where all the magic happens. Exactly. Nothing happens within your comfort zone. And Jack Talman, thank you so much for tuning in, buddy. Another thing also, there's also people that are probably sitting in in this audience right now that probably didn't even do anything in 2017. They failed to launch. You know, some people are afraid of completing tasks until they're perfect, but other people actually fail to initiate the plan of any sort. Do you know what I mean? Some of us are afraid of commitment, irregardless of how smart or how big your IQ is. 
You won't get far if you're not moving any forward. So if you haven't moved the needle from where you were in 2016 and 2017, you got to make sure that 2018, at least you're going to go in with guns blazing. You know? And one other thing, your personal shortcoming of procrastination. Sometimes some people just procrastinate. There's a lot of people that can't deal well with pressure. And they just tend to procrastinating, you know, in order to just, you know, let, let it go and let bigger challenges come. If you are putting something out right now and saying, I'll look at it in the next year, you've already failed. And Paul says, we are all waiting for someone else to go first. Well, how are people going to know? There's always the Roger Bannister. I don't know if you heard about Roger Bannister's story about crossing the four minute mile. People are looking for leaders. People are looking for people to follow. Why not you? You know? And they're also looking to blame other people. In case they do something wrong, then it's not their fault. I know, I understand. When a setback occurs, it's important to actually look at it with, with an objective mind. You know what I mean? And then you ask yourself, how could I have done this better? When you start blaming others or other people's circumstances, it leads you to feeling like you don't even have any control in your life. And it robs you of the, you know, the opportunity to actually move on or to improve. All right? So it's not about having the best good looking funnel. It's not about having the best landing page. It's not about having the best website. It's not about having the best app. It's not about attending the, the best webinar. It's not about attending the best course. It's all to do with you. Have you got it? Have you got the motivation? Have you, have you taken yourself off the self-doubt? Are you not procrastinating? You know? Do you have the right skills to actually have a business that is profitable and enjoyable? I really want you guys to win, guys. And every time you understand how, you know, it is a big passion of mine because I actually believe that every online business should be profitable and enjoyable. Why not yours? Why not you? All right. Thank you so much for tuning in, guys. And if you enjoyed this show, please share this to at least three people. You know, that could be the, the, the best thing that you could do for somebody, especially if they're struggling to get their business off the ground or if they're really looking to have a business that's profitable and enjoyable. My mission really, guys, is to inspire you to actually do things that inspire you. I hope you enjoyed this show as much as I enjoy creating it. Uh, enjoy the rest of your day.